The state of browsers recently has been interesting. Chrome kind of won. I don't think that's debated anymore. But what is going on that's kind of unexpected is this resurgence of other browsers that are Chrome-based but offer very different things. There's a bunch of them, be it the one baked into Windows with Edge, be it all the crazy things going on with third-party browsers, or the one that we're here to talk about today, Arc. Oh boy, this is going to be a bit of a tough one for me. If you didn't already know, I've been a big fan of the Arc browser for a bit, but that wasn't immediate. When I first tried Arc, I honestly didn't like it that much. It took three attempts of actually committing to the browser for it to actually click for me and become my browser of choice. If it wasn't for my CTO Mark pushing it on me, I probably wouldn't have bothered at all. I was happy with Chrome. But after giving it a real go, figuring out the hotkeys that I liked, getting used to that sidebar, and just falling in love with the way the browser operated, it became a thing that I quite enjoyed using, and not privately either. I've been very public with my love of Arc, and a lot of you are too. I am certain many people, you'll probably even see them in the comment section here, started using Arc because they discovered it in my content and my videos. And that's part of why this one's so hard for me. Because in one hand, I do genuinely feel like I was slightly misled, but on the other, by transitive property, that means I kind of misled y'all as well. And I don't wanna feel that way. I don't wanna feel like this thing that so many of us are invested in might actually die soon. See that, Arc 2.0? Let's see what he actually says about Arc 2.0 quick. So we got two things to share with you today. Arc is not going anywhere. The product you love is staying put. And we're building a brand new product. To be honest, we're not even sure it's a web browser. That's the concern. They're done iterating on Arc. If you keep going through, there are some moments in here that, that hurt me. And while we've quadrupled the number of people that use Arc every day this year, if you extrapolate that out, we're not gonna get to a billion people using this product. This is what I, I struggle to fathom. And I'm sorry, Josh. I hope that me covering this now Oh, it's a copyright. God damn it. Why do they do this to me? I just lost all the monetization I'm going to get for the live. Anyways, thanks, Arc. Before we hear why Arc 2.0 isn't real, we should quickly hear from today's sponsors because Arc just cost me a bunch of money. <laughs> Browser base. These guys are great. They make it way easier to access browsers via APIs, you know, like the puppeteer type thing. Let's take a quick, uh, wait, that's an open source repo. What? Oh. Huh, they put out an open source SDK that lets you write plain English to playwright and match a schema to get data out of any URL on the internet. If you've done browser automation, you should immediately know how nuts this is. And if a company is capable of building something as cool as automated playwright with AI, you know they're good for hosting the browser too. Browserbase is a cloud platform that hosts your Playwright, Puppeteer, whatever else for your remote browser for you, so you can just search the web via API, or in most cases, AI. If you've ever struggled with Puppeteer or Playwright, there's a good chance Browserbase will make your life easier. Check them out today at soydev.link slash Browserbase. And don't forget to go give a star to Stagehand. This is really, really cool. Anyways, I struggle genuinely to fathom how someone can look at the chart we just saw before and decide it's time to pivot. This is a really good DAU chart. This is really good growth. The issue is that their goal isn't to have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dedicated users, it's to have a billion users like Chrome. The goal with the browser company wasn't to make something that is much better for a subset. The way he puts it later in the video is he wanted a browser that his mom would use and he didn't build that. And on one hand, I can sympathize when you have a specific mission in mind, which is in this case to reinvent how we use the web. And what you get is a subset of people who really like the tool you built, but you're struggling to break out of that. That does force a moment of reflection. Are you building the right thing or not? My issue is they built something great for me. They missed a few dumb things that should be easily fixed that I felt dragged on about for a bit. And the result is, I don't know if the browser will ever be fixed. I hate to keep harping on this point about this chart, but I, I seriously can't stop thinking about it. Since they have investors, they have to go big. They have to become a billion dollar company to justify the money they raised and the money they're spending to try and build something different. 
but you don't have to get there by having a billion users. You can get there having a small number of users that actually pay real amounts of money. And there are companies that have done this in the general space. One of those is Superhuman. I really like Superhuman. I was skeptical going in that a, what is it, 30 bucks a month right now? Sorry, that a $25 a month subscription for a wrapper for Gmail for better hotkeys could ever be worth it. But it actually is. I cannot fathom my life and the amount of email that I do without Superhuman at this point. And if they were to hit me up and say, hey, we're actually changing the pricing. It's actually 200 a month now. I would sigh as I hit accept. It is that essential for me. Superhuman proves that if you build something that is a big enough multiplier on the existing experience, even if it isn't valuable to most people, because there is no world in which my mom moves to Superhuman, the same way there's no world in which my mom moves to Arc. She's also probably not gonna install any AI chat apps on her phone. It's just, we have to be realistic about those things. So if you can make real money on your users because those users are deeper, they care more, and they're more willing to spend that monthly fee, you can make a very successful business. By the way, if you are actually interested in using Superhuman, if you are a person that spends more than a few hours a day in email, I think it's worth it. I'll leave my affiliate link in the description. It's just soydev.link slash superhuman. I cannot imagine life without it. If you're the same, I appreciate if you use that link. I think they give you a discount. Either way, it'll get me paid, which is nice because I've spent a lot of money on Superhuman because it's worth it. And I pay for it for all my team. Just for quick reference, by the way, they're already making almost $40 million a year on an email wrapper. Like, what? That's a lot of money. And their growth is going up. They had a similar plateau to what the ARC team is probably feeling right now and managed to break out and get that number going up a bunch. And the result of that raise, which by the way, we only have their raise history up till 2021. They were able to raise on a $750 million valuation. If they were close to a billion dollar company then, they are probably a billion dollar company now, like almost certainly. And I think most businesses and most CEOs would be envious of the position that ARC is in where they have all of these users and they're not just random users who refuse to spend money. They're not the moms of the world. They're business people. They're people like you and me, developers who rely on their browser for the work they do every day. They gave me the browser for free and they tried to charge me for features that are more targeted towards people like my mom and not me, like the AI summaries of random shit. I don't care. But if they charged me for, I don't know, using it for more than a month or for fixing the downloads tab, like I complained about earlier, like I would be down to pay gladly 30 plus bucks a month for this browser if it would actually be maintained but it doesn't feel like it's going to be and instead of trying to fix that they're going to go for that billion user thing there's two ways we could think about this either browsers can't make money which is how people felt about email like you can't charge a lot of money for an email app it's kind of funny when you think about it i spend five to six bucks a month to host my email with google on google workspaces and then i pay 30 a month to use things with superhuman so I'm paying six times more per user for the app I access my email in than the email service itself. But that's because they made something that good. And while I can see why there'd be concerns that people aren't going to pay for a browser, the fact that Superhuman can make as much money as they do shows that it's worth at least trying and not leaving behind your most enthusiastic users in the process of pursuing something bigger. I have two things I wanna discuss. First, I wanna talk about the issues that I'm having that I'm now concerned will never be resolved. And second, I wanna talk about what they're actually going to go do instead. The first thing, as I just mentioned, are the issues that I have. There's a lot of things that are going to be hard to solve that they probably won't. Like, Arc will never be on Linux now. There isn't a world in which they port it to Linux when they are done improving the product and platform. They're not going to do that. And it's not open source, so we can't do it instead they're not going to make the Windows build much better than it currently is. It was a lot of work to get a Swift-based browser working on Windows, and they did it, and it got working. It's still not the browser I reach to on Windows, but I also don't reach to browsers on Windows that often, to be fair. But it is my favorite browser on my Mac, so at least I can use it there, right? Right? Yeah, and I hope that they'll continue to maintain it and make it safer, but there are issues. For reference, the MacBook that I'm using here is not the computer I'm streaming from. This computer is wired over HDMI to a Windows machine. So the only things I'm doing on this right now are Arc, Zen, which I couldn't get the video to buffer in properly, so we're using Arc still. My Notion, my Terminal, 
my editor, and a minimal Discord clone that it's not a clone. It's a minimal Discord web wrapper so that I can use less resources and have less issues with Discord. I do not have much stuff open. Despite that, there are some hilarious performance issues that I run into regularly. Opening and closing the sidebar is fine. I do have one thing that's annoying. It slides in and out by default. To turn that off, there's no setting in arc. You have to turn off motion across your entire Mac, which I did just so that this no longer slides in and out and causes the content to shift a bunch as it does it. That's not the performance issue. That's just a small experience issue. The performance issue is this button here, collections. I have a decent number of things in my downloads folder. Let's quickly check how many. If I go here, right click, get info. Okay, this is counting subdirectories, but I have a, a decent number of things in my download folder. It is what it is, okay? The issue is when I click this button, not only does it index everything in my downloads folder, it tries to render them all in one list. So if I accidentally click this button twice, which by the way is very easy because you are here and if you just tap it, it lags to open. It lags the whole browser, like the frame rates down to like two FPS now and closing it will freeze half the time. If I accidentally click this button, my browser might just stop working for 30 plus seconds. It's so bad. It's so bad. And it makes me embarrassed to be using this browser when it happens, when I'm like screen sharing with somebody. I'm turning off reduced motion so we can get the full experience here. <laughs> Making sure that animates again. Cool, it does. First off, see the jank I was talking about where the thing just slides around? It's not their fault. The web sucks when you stretch things like that. Yeah. But now when I click this, the lag, the, the frame rate of the scroll here is awful. It doesn't stick with the stickiness when I'm scrolling. I'm clicking it again. It didn't open that time. It lagged. It froze that time. Like I clicked it. It takes three to five seconds to actually open. It's it's real bad. And if I try to drag something from it somewhere else, it, it will just freeze entirely. All I want, and I don't think it's a big ask, is a way to cut down the amount of things that are here by default. Give me the option not to filter by a profile, but to limit by, I don't know, a time span, maybe limit it to things I downloaded in the last month or my last 100 downloads. These are all, I think, reasonable asks, which is why I made them about a year and a half ago. I was in touch with the ARC team. We had some emails back and forth. I think I even did a call with them. And they told me that the problem here was things that Swift UI does wrong, that they planned to fix or work around. There was a fix coming in the next update for ARC and more coming in the near future. That was over a year ago. I tried when that happened and it wasn't, it was better, but still laggy. So I followed up again and said, hey, I'm still having these issues. What's up? And the response from an engine on the team was, hey, we're still working on it. We did ship a performance fix, but we have more coming in the next two updates. I'll follow up when they've shipped so we can get more information. They never followed up. I didn't feel like continuing to push it. And honestly, I had just trained myself to never click this button for any fucking reason. But it still annoyed me to no end. When I heard this announcement that they were no longer working on improving ARC, because it's fine as is, I was concerned that these bugs might exist forever now. So I hit them up one last time. I hit up the engineer I had chatted with before saying, hey man, I'm concerned here. I really hoped that we would get these updates and that I would get to have the few things that were left that were still broken for me get fixed. I'm not even asking for features, just like, I want to be able to put the sidebar on the right. I want to be able to do vertical splits. I have a lot of other things like that that I want but I'm not gonna push for that. I understand they're not going to be adding everything everyone wants, but making the thing that's here actually work, <laughs> that's not that big an ask. I really don't think it is. Sadly, they did. I reported massive ARC performance issues to browser company over a year ago. I was promised a resolution. I followed up with the engineers and the team last week. They forwarded me to memberships support. That's the thing that made me realize this might actually be over. They no longer were letting me an engineer with technical issues talk to an engineer who can solve the technical issues. They now put a support person in front. And when you do that with a team that previously was willing to talk to people like me, there's one reason. You want to stop burdening those engineers with a thing that isn't their responsibility anymore. It broke my heart. It was very, very, it felt in that moment like the ARC team was no longer invested in making ARC a great experience. They were okay with the quality of the experience that existed then. It really hurt, especially because these issues were over a year old 
And while, as Josh clarifies underneath, which we'll get to in a moment, the number of people affected by this bug isn't necessarily massive, but the size of the performance issue that I was having is massive because it means there's a feature in the browser, the download tab, that I literally cannot use. And because it is always there when you go into this section, I've never used spaces or easels or boosts in this view. And I didn't even know there was an archive tabs button because I never sit in this view. And this would actually have been useful and save me some trouble in the past. But I don't know that because I can't go in this tab because it locks up my computer half the time I do it. It's unacceptable. But because it affects a small enough percentage of people, I am fear mongering. And before I, I roast Josh for this take, I want to say we did hash things out in DMs. We're doing a call soon. I hope me doing this video before we schedule the call doesn't mean he's not going to do it. I still want to talk with you, Josh. I will absolutely do a follow-up if you convince me that I'm wrong here. But it is my journalistic reporter duty, both as somebody who reports on the news in the space and has led people towards this browser, to report my experience here and share it with those who chose Arc based on the good experiences I had. Josh said, okay, now you're just fear-mongering to get views. We've had our entire performance engineering team staffed on Arc nonstop this entire year. You can criticize my decision to build a second product, but it's not fair to slander my team who has been working their asses off. Building a novel browser across platforms is extremely hard for a small team. If you'd like to DM or email me the details, I'd be happy to jump on it. Can someone clarify where I slandered the team here? Also, not great viewership. I don't make money on views on X. I'd be surprised if this video ends up in the top 10 videos I did this month, genuinely. I'm not doing this for views. I've actually lost money covering Arc and using Arc as I've discussed in the past. I do it because I like it. It is the best browser I've ever used on my computer. It's really sad to have the CEO of a company that built a product I genuinely love and promote and give endless free PR to at my own personal cost to be told because I have concerns that I'm fear mongering and slandering their team. <laughs> it's so unreal. I don't want to harp on things in DMs, but there's one thing he said in DMs that really irked me that I don't know how to discuss, so I'm just going to air it out here. He specifically said, we both probably have things we regret saying in this interaction. I don't. I don't regret a word I fucking said about this. I handled this really well. He is being emotional. I will not take the fall on that one because I have not said anything here I think is worth regretting. And if I am incorrect there, if any of the people who I trust and look up to can say, hey, Theo, mostly fair, but this thing was a bit of a reach and you probably shouldn't have said that, I'm down to take that back. The fact that he couldn't take the accountability of this being an emotional overreach has me really concerned about the future, not just of ARC, but of the company. And the fact that chat's response immediately is, is this just Matt again from the WordPress drama is sad. If this wasn't me versus him, I would probably be more defensive because I know how easy it is to get into that emotional moment when you're getting pushed back, especially if it's like the first time it's really exploded. But it is about me. So it's hard for me to be that generous. <laughs> and also, it's still unacceptable, even if I can sympathize with the position the person's in. And I absolutely can. Historically, while they've had issues here and there with ARC around things like the security incidents with Firebase, they were able to flip the sentiment relatively quickly and generally speaking, be good citizens of sentiment and community management. There weren't many people who used ARC saying that this sucks. People will be doing dunks whenever they can, but the fact that for the first time, users who love the product were really concerned means that he effectively treated me like someone who doesn't use and love the browser. He treated me the way he treats all of the haters with dismissal and disdain. But the fact that he is the founder, CEO, and owner of this browser that I love could so quickly throw away my perspective because it doesn't align with what he thinks it should be is very, very concerning. This is the main topic of the call we're going to do if we are going to do it. He needs to understand that his users are not the haters. And if the users sound like haters, he probably fucked up. The follow-up made it much worse. Respect him for not sharing my info there. That said, if we're a company that I have relations with and I've like discussed these things before, especially if I've ever talked about them publicly, I don't care. I would have been totally cool with him saying it publicly, but I have a lot of respect for him not doing that without explicit permission. But then to say I'm experiencing an extreme edge case that's experienced by less than 0.1% of the users that is difficult for them to fix because of how I use my OS. How I use my OS is I have a downloads folder with more than 200 items in it. That's not that weird a use case. 
if you just, and again, like if my use case is that weird, the solution isn't ignore it. It's add a setting that doesn't affect the 99.9% .9 and then fixes the 0.1%. So if the issue is again, that I have too many files in my downloads folder, and since I have so many of those, it's an absurd amount of things. Cool. Find the amount that's too high and draw a cap there. It won't affect the rest of the users and it will fix my problem. If I don't fit into the box of how you expect your users to work, make a small code change that fits into the box. It's not that hard. I've done all sorts of pagination and rate limiting shit throughout my career. It's not that hard to do. They told me they were going to look into it and probably do it, but you can't expect any tech to render thousands of items in a list on demand without issues. Other people in chat are dropping their numbers here too. There's people with small numbers like 400 to 500 files and then people who have 21,000 files. Yeah. Thank you chat, by the way. The fact that you guys have been so supportive in this and like get it means a lot because this is, this was sad for me. I hate accusations like that. Like slander is a very real accusation. And I wouldn't say that about anybody, especially somebody who's using my shit. Ugh, I, I really hated that. I, I hope we can patch this up and be on better terms, genuinely. I did follow up here and clarified the exact issue I'm having. Said 100% cool with you sharing the details. I have nothing to hide. I also reached out over DMs if you prefer to continue privately. For those who are curious, my issue is with downloads. Specifically, when I open the downloads collection or tab, slow to a crawl, dropping a single digit FPS and taking seconds to respond to my attempts to close it. Collections features effectively unusable on my machine. The reasons that I have a lot of files in my downloads folder, like just for reference, for people who think like I'm downloading all the time, kind of. What I do is all of my programs for creative stuff export to downloads. So when I finish an edit for a video, it exports to downloads. When I finish an edit for a thumbnail I'm working on, it goes to downloads. I do that because organizing all of these things is actually fucking impossible for me. So instead of pretending I can organize all of it, instead, I sort by recency. And when I need to upload something that I just did, it's going to be right there. Generally speaking, I think folder systems and file systems are poorly architected and art. They're like an artifact of a previous way computers work that we just deal with now. But downloads being the place where the thing I just did goes and sorting it by recent has been a game changer for my organization because I don't have to think about it anymore. The thing I need is right there and I'm just going to search for it and find her anyways. And I see a lot of people in chat agreeing with me. I use downloads as the only place I put anything. Yes. I think the fact that it was first raised over a year ago and not resolved is worse. Yep, absolutely. Having a lot of things in downloads folder doesn't seem unusual and doesn't seem rare. Somebody just dropped, they have 18,375 folders in their download directory, 130,000 files over a terabyte of stuff. It's not that uncommon. And the most important thing is where do those users fall? Because even if it is, as he said, 0.1% of users, where do they fall in terms of enthusiast levels. If that 0.1% are the most diehard ARC users, or in this case, are some of your biggest promoters, like I am, I don't care what percentage of the audience I represent. I care how severe is my issue and how easy is it to fix. The severity of this issue is relatively high. The ease to fix is also relatively high. It's very easy to fix this problem, but it hasn't been fixed. And now that he's thinking about the team differently, it doesn't surprise me. And that's sad. It's really sad to think that I, as one of the biggest promoters of Arc and one of the people that is really fell in love with this browser, that their response to my actual genuine fears, which came from being pawned off to membership support, result in this. And I'm not super excited for what's coming next either. I did manage to download it. It was on browsewith10.com. I don't know what it is yet. I downloaded it. And when I downloaded it, by the way, it went to my downloads folder. So I had to open up Finder to click it. Otherwise, my computer would lag. I opened it. It opened a DMG named Arc. The DMG name, the disk mounted name, when you try to install their new browser that they claim isn't actually them, is Arc. It's clear they're semi forking internally to build this new browser. This wouldn't have happened otherwise. And browser.app, I installed, but very sadly was unable to sign up. If I just do fake at gmail.com, and click create. Pre-sign up failed with error. Error occurred while trying to sign up. Lambda verification. They don't want me using this right now. The fact that it leaked and people have been finding it, it is what it is. But this to me says they are trying to fork Arc into something new. And Arc as we know it will be poorly, if at all, maintained because this is either internally Arc is now this other thing or they forked it internally and the old repo is going to die. There's very few other paths I could see for this. And if I'm wrong, 
it's not my responsibility to figure that out. It's theirs to clarify. Chat just cleared up for me that the weird browse with 10 thing is actually known and they've clarified a few hours ago, very convenient timing, what it was. It was an internal attempt to make a really minimal beta of a different way of browsing. It wasn't meant to be the actual new browser. It was meant to be a way for them to try something different. It was obviously built on top of Arc because their goal was to like rush this out and get it tested as quickly as possible to validate these new ideas. As I say here, it was a temporary experimental prototype. It was a beta testing program that has been closed and now they're going to take what they learned and they're going to go build something new with it. Cool. Happy they were public about this. And there's also good call-outs here. Why did it seem like it was being marketed? They went ham making it like a fake real product, like the, the whole website and everything. It's, I think this is overkill. I, I think that they, they like to treat everything like it's a bigger deal than it is, including like an experiment like this, getting a whole fancy marketing site and video and everything. It's just, it's how they are. They try to appleify everything, even their experiments, which good for them. Cool. Also of note, the person who left all these comments isn't an employee. They're a community mod. This is what they know, having chatted with them and used these things. This isn't an employee officially saying these things, which is worth noting. And honestly, what would have been really nice here, and my advice to them going forward, is take advantage of the fact that people like me exist. There's a lot of companies and a lot of teams they build a lot of things that I talk about in my content. Most of them have learned how easy it is to hit me up and ask about a thing they're going to do. I regularly get requests from companies that are surprisingly big, asking me, usually under NDA, to take a look at what they're doing and give them an idea of what that rollout is going to look like. I know it's scary because I'm this weird in-between of like an enthusiast and a promoter as well as a journalist and reporter. And the expectation is I'm gonna leak everything. I've never violated NDA in my goddamn life. I'm really good about this. It's important to me. And if they had hit me up ahead of time and said, hey, we're thinking about announcing this change, any thoughts? I could have helped them better communicate how this is running internally. But since they don't do that, they don't ask for help with how things are communicated. They ask for polls on which features should be deprecated. <laughs> it feels very one way. It feels like we as Arc users are being told by the Arc team and by browser company, what we should and shouldn't think and what we should and shouldn't do. And here I'm being very explicitly told that I am the problem. And that sucks. I don't know what else to say. I just hope they listen. I do genuinely hope they take the opportunity to reflect on this, help the community understand what's actually going to happen and let us know sincerely, is there a future for Arc or not? There are other browsers, I teased Zen earlier, that are open source, freely available and still being meaningfully maintained, but they're nowhere near as ready as Arc is. And I'm not ready to leave it behind yet. And honestly, the way I'm feeling now is that I'm more invested in the success of Arc than they are. And that shouldn't be the case. I really hope I'm wrong here. I do genuinely hope so. And if I have a good conversation with Josh, I will certainly do a follow-up video. But for now, I'm just sad. And if, if you jumped on Arc because of me, and now you're feeling sad too, I'll say the thing they won't. I'm sorry. Until next time, Peace, nerds.